Welcome to this Autodesk Factory Design Suite presentation. My name is Rusty Belcher. In today's presentation, we're going to be looking at utilizing the Factory Design Suite on layout designs that are not factories. We want to focus on the broader uses of the Autodesk Factory Design Suite and how it can be used in many different layout scenarios. I have the opportunity of working with many different layout designers, and each time I suggest utilizing the Factory Design Suite, they all basically say the same thing at first. Why would I ever consider using a tool called Factory Design Suite? I don't do factory work. We don't make factories here. Well, there are many advantages to the layout design workflow contained inside the Factory Design Suite, and this presentation is going to focus on many of those advantages. Of course, we want to take the time and go in depth with some examples of layout designs that are not factories but utilize the factory design suite workflow. And we want to explain why other industries would consider using the factory design suite instead of their current CAD software. Now before we get started with the main presentation, I want to make sure you know what's included in the factory design suite. This might be the first time you've ever seen a factory design suite demo, and it's important you know what applications are included in the suite. Let's start off with our 2D work we're going to do inside of AutoCAD. Now the main version of AutoCAD that comes with the factory design suite is AutoCAD Architecture. AutoCAD Architecture allows us to easily create any architectural element that's needed for our layout design. But we, they also give you AutoCAD Mechanical. So if you need to do 2D mechanical designs, you have the perfect AutoCAD for that solution. You also get AutoCAD MEP for generating pipe runs or HVAC runs in your building. And before I move on, I also want to make sure you understand that you can use just regular vanilla AutoCAD if you want to. The majority of the 3D work will be accomplished in Autodesk Inventor. Autodesk Inventor is the 3D basis of the factory design suite. Now there are many different workflows that you can use. You can start in 2D in AutoCAD and with a single command you can transfer your 2D design to make it 3D inside of Inventor. You can also do the same thing. I can generate a 3D design and with a single command I can send that to 2D AutoCAD. In any layout solution it's quite often that the layout will get so large it's, it basically grows larger than your CAD system can hold. That's why we utilize Navisworks. Navisworks allows us to mock up our space and that space can be as large as we want it to be. We also have the best visualization tools in our product. Both 3ds Max and Showcase are included in the factory design suite. And if you're interested in utilizing Reality Capture or Laser Scan Point Clouds, Autodesk Recap is included as well. Now, these are not just the basic products. We've also got the Autodesk Factory Design Utilities. These are custom-built special commands that enhance AutoCAD, Inventor, and Navisworks and make the layout process so easy. So now we want to focus on the broader uses of the Factory Design Suite. I remember the first time I saw the Factory Design Suite, I actually had a chance to work directly with Autodesk when this tool rolled out. I had the opportunity to generate some of the first marketing videos and uh, some of the first training content for the Factory Design Suite. And I remember when the project manager introduced the product to me, he gave me a quick demonstration. It was the first time I ever saw the factory design suite. I saw these assets land upright on this factory floor, and I saw these connectors snap these assets together like, you know, little Lego bricks. And I was amazed at how easy the layout process was accomplished with the factory design suite. After that demo, the project manager asked me what I thought. And I remember saying, hey, this is amazing. What a great job. But the second thing I said, I remember it to this day. I said, I wish you had called this product something else. Uh, I wish you had called it the layout design suite because I have many different layout customers that don't do factories, but they could really have a benefit for using this type of workflow for their designs. And from that point on, I've always had this phrase in my head, don't let the word factory get in the way. If you uh, do any kind of layout uh, that has a floor and assets that you need to put in the best strategic location, then you need to understand that the factory design suite 
was built specifically for what you need. Now, I figured what I'd like to do to start off is to share with you uh, basically the last year of my life working with the factory design suite and some of the layout customers I've had a chance to work with this past year. The last demo I did just a couple of weeks ago for factory design suite was to a group of people that make preschool furniture and they have a, a constant set of their preschool furniture assets but they're constantly given new architectural designs to fill out or lay out with their product. They need to highlight their product in the best way possible inside of somebody else's architectural space. And the factory design suite was a perfect fit for that. It's very similar to some of the other customers I've had a chance to work with that do command and control centers. Or really, if you think about it, any space where you need to take your product and put it in context of somebody else's architectural layout. You know, maybe you're the person that generates these wall monitors, or maybe you make custom furniture like these, de these desks that are on the command uh, control floor. You need a very easy way to highlight your products in context of somebody else's architectural space, and the factory design suite works perfect for that. Now, the factory design suite can also be used for retail spaces. I worked on a major project this year with a major retailer. Now I'm not going to drop their names, but uh, I just about guarantee that you're wearing the clothes that these people sell right now. They're looking to take all of their point of sale stores around the world and they're looking to lay out those stores with a constant set of ever-changing assets. The factory design suite was the perfect fit for that situation. I remember one of the first demonstrations I ever did for Factory Design Suite was to a group of people that are actually laying out supermarkets. The shelves and the freezers and the cabinets were all assets that have to be placed in the best strategic location in a supermarket layout. And the Factory Design Suite was again a perfect fit for that process. Event planning is another great situation where the Factory Design Suite could be used. Uh, I live in Virginia and this year uh, the Bristol Motor Speedway, which is right across the border in Tennessee. They're actually, this is a NASCAR Speedway, but they're going to hold a football game there. And uh, this little half-mile racetrack will be the site of the largest football game in college history. And transferring their venue from a race car track to a football stadium would be a great situation to utilize the factory design suite. That reminds me of another situation they use, or that, that we encounter. Uh, I think uh, the college basketball schedule starts every year on board a naval ship. And the conversion of a flight deck into a basketball venue is another great opportunity to use the factory design suite. This year, I actually got a chance to work with people that make these exhibit spaces that you see on convention floors like Comic-Con or CES. Uh, they actually wanted to build their exhibit space and have these pieces, these predefined pieces, snap together so that they could quickly and easily build any layout of exhibit space they want. And we were able to show them that we could absolutely do this with the factory design suite and not just show their exhibit space, but we could actually show the entire convention floor in that Navisworks application I mentioned earlier. One of the first groups of people who really embraced this asset-based layout process was shipbuilders. Shipbuilders took this idea and used it for shipboard compartment layout, and they were very, very successful in doing that. This past year, I was invited to go up to Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and to do this shipbuilding layout approach with the factory design suite aboard a subsurface vessel. And they were amazed at how easy it was to do shipboard compartment layout on a nuclear submarine. That project was very, very well received. Another project I got to work on last year was a substation layout, and I was amazed at how the factory design suite could be utilized for something as complex as the substation. There's actually a company who's produced a product that converts factory design suite to a substation design suite. That company is called Automation Force and they really have embraced this idea of using factory design suite for designs other than factories. And finally, I ended my year at Autodesk University this year where I got a chance to teach a new class 
about utilizing laser scans and point clouds with the factory design suite. I actually called this real reality enabled asset layout. And this is the idea. You actually can go take a laser scanner and you can scan all of your equipment to make a, a three-dimensional point cloud. That point cloud can then be utilized as an asset in the factory design suite. So you can scan the buildings, you can scan your assets, and then you can put your design together using real-world objects. This is going to assure you that you have the best possible reality capture design and the factory design suite works perfectly as the platform for this layout process. Now I want to focus on the advantages offered by the factory design suite. Why would a layout designer consider the factory design suite instead of their current CAD applications? Well there are many advantages. Some of them are very simple like the floor. Uh, every single layout design you create with a factory design suite starts on a common ground plane we call a floor. Your assets are placed, they automatically land upright, and they're very easy to arrange in the best position possible. It's very easy to paint reference lines on this floor utilizing your legacy 2D AutoCAD designs. These assets are so easy to place, I often call them Lego bricks because of how easy they snap together. And these assets are your assets. Any model that you can create, you can get into the factory design suite and use. These models can contain parameters and they can be as intelligent as necessary. You can also generate incredibly large assemblies. You don't have to worry about making an assembly too large for your CAD application. We've got that Navisworks application in the background to create any digital mock-up of any size we need. And the factory design suite is so easy to use. It's so easy that you can actually put it in the hands of your tradesmen and have them tell you how the layout design should be put together. Let's go in depth with some of the advantages of the factory design suite. And of course I want to start with the floor. Any layout design created in Inventor is going to contain this ground plane or floor. You can change the size and it can accommodate designs of any size, large and small. Another advantage is the DWG overlay command. This allows you to paint reference lines on your floor using your legacy AutoCAD drawings. Now I've opened up my Inventor application and I'm going to go up to the Factory tab. The Factory tab is one of those tabs that's added to Inventor through the Factory Design Suite utilities and it allows me to create a new layout. When you create a new layout you're automatically provided with a floor. This is where the assets land and they land upright automatically. And this floor is very versatile. I can come in and change the size of it very easily with grips so you can enter any size floor you want or I can come in and change the elevation of the floor if you have a design that has multiple stories it's very easy for you to change the elevation for the floor now I need to add reference lines to my floor and to do that I'm going to import an AutoCAD drawing using the add DWG overlay command this is one of those commands that I think is almost worth the price of admission. So it's so easy for me to come in and grab an old AutoCAD drawing and I can take that drawing and add it to the floor automatically. Now here you see I have a major design like a ship deck but it doesn't matter really uh, size doesn't uh, matter. I can, uh, I can do large scale designs or small scale. Let's do another new layout and this time I'm going to use the add DWG overlay to do something like a circuit board. So here's something that's incredibly small. But in both cases, the factory design suite allows me to uh, handle it very easily. Another big advantage of the factory design suite is the asset-based approach for the layout spaces. These assets that you create snap together very easily. Uh, I mentioned before that these assets snap together just like those little Lego bricks you used to play with as kids. And many of us have been looking for a CAD solution that is that simple. We've been looking at it for this for years. Uh, I think everybody knows how valuable blocks are inside of AutoCAD and how necessary it is to have a good block library in your AutoCAD application. Well, let's take that now into the 3D world and have a library of common assets. 
where we can drag easily onto the screen and snap in position just like those old AutoCAD blocks. Now it's important you understand that these are your assets. Uh, it, any models that you can create you can convert to a factory design suite asset and it doesn't have to be solid. Uh, you can even use point clouds as factory assets but these are your designs. These designs can include parameters. You can make your assets as intelligent as possible. We've got a good example of that coming up in, a, in another part of this presentation. And there are many commands in the factory design suite that make 3D very easy and accessible to everybody. The connectors that allow the assets to snap together, the reposition command that allows you to orient the asset in any position you want, and even the idea of the insert model command that you can bring models in from any CAD application and drop them onto the floor. They don't have to be assets. Back in Inventor, I want to show you this asset-based approach. On the Factory tab, I'm going to activate my Asset Browser. This is the library of all of my assets. Along with that, I'm going to activate my Factory Properties. If the assets contain parameters, they'll show up in the Factory Property window. Now, I'm going to go to my user asset folder. Uh, I have to, you know, I got to stop at this point and talk about how nice it is to be able to create my own library of components. There is a library of parts that come with the factory design suite. They're called system assets, and they have many different categories architectural, automotive, uh, conveyors, and material handling. Of course, you would expect that many of these categories correspond to the factory layout process. But there are things like uh, retail spaces that uh, Autodesk has realized that the broader uses of the factory designs would include things like the retail spaces. So there are a library of assets that come with the application. But the real power is that you can create your own assets very easily. So I'm going to go into my user asset category and I'm going to come down in, into uh, circuit board design. Now in this first example I, I've, I've got to tell you that uh, listen, if you're doing circuit board design, you really want to focus on some of the other tools that are available from Autodesk. I think Autodesk has really embraced this asset-based approach for things like their 1, 2, 3D products for circuits, or even the AutoCAD or, or the, uh, the AutoCAD electrical uh, process has a way to bring in components that's very similar to the functionality of the factory design suite. But a few years ago, when I didn't have access to that, I created my own circuit board asset library. Now if I zoom into my AutoCAD drawing, let's say I want to drop in a few LED lights. Well, I simply drag the asset from the asset browser, it appears on my cursor, and then I can snap this to the AutoCAD drawings. It, it, if you've ever dropped a block inside of AutoCAD, it's really the same kind of process. So I can come over and I can drop these things in very easily. Let's go ahead and add a third one there. Now these assets are parametric. So as an example, this LED light is supposed to be red. I can come over here to my color drop-down and I can change that to one of the specified colors that's available for the LED light. In this case, this one's purple. There you go. Let's go ahead and add a chip real quick. Let's just come down. I'm, I'm going to add one of the first chips here that I see. Let's see if this one fits. So again, it's so easy to be able to snap to those AutoCAD drawings. And let's add another resistor just as another example of this asset based approach. I can come in and, and pick a resistor, I can drop it in place and then I can reposition it upwards or downwards. If I hit escape, let me try that again. Just make sure I snap it there. I can also spin it if I pick the top of the uh, reposition command I can spin it easily into the desired orientation. Let's go over to that ship design and I'm going to zoom in here. Now you saw some simple assets. I want to talk about those parametric assets and how advanced an asset can actually be. So I'm going to go back to my user category and I'm going to come down to my ship design. I've been working with shipbuilders for quite a while in the utilizing the factory design suite for shipboard compartment layout. 
and they have many different categories that they needed. They needed electrical equipment, HVAC equipment. They needed outfitting, piping. Uh, we just got finished doing the uh, submarine example and the structural example. I, I want to deal with a structural example here. And I'm going to grab a bulkhead on a ship. And we're going to bring that in. We'll snap it to the midpoint of this line. And if I zoom back in there, you can see the assets placed. Now, these assets are parametric. So if I select the asset, I can control many different things on this particular component. For instance, the length. I can highlight the length, and then I can measure one of my AutoCAD lines. I simply update the asset to suit. We can also turn on and off features. So let's uh, have some hatches here. Let's go ahead and add these hatches, and we're simply turning them on. And you can see the hatches appear automatically. We can also control what stiffener those hatches fall on. So I want those to fall on the third stiffener away from the center line. There we go. So in next to no time, I've got my bulkhead. I can even go down and turn on the angles at the end. You know, these bulkheads are going to uh, butt into the ship hull. So if you want to add those little angles at the end so the extra material is there and can be cut away on board ship, that's very easy to do also. Now I mentioned that these assets can actually snap together. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to go over here to my HVAC category, and I'm going to drop in some ductwork. I'm going to come in with a simple vertical duct. We'll just place it here for this example. And this duct needs to be 7 feet long, so it's so easy to select it. I can come in, I can type in my length, I can type in 7 feet, and the duct lengthens to suit. Now I want to add a bend. Now when I bring this asset in, you'll notice the connectors, those little green dots. Notice how they're drawn to each other and how they snap together just like those building bricks. Now this way of placing the assets just makes it so easy for you to come in and generate your design. All you have to do is find the appropriate asset and snap it together just like those little Lego bricks we used to work with uh, when we were kids. Now I wanted to add a transition component here. So we'll transition from a rectangle to a circular piece of ductwork. And we'll put a circular duct in here. Now these little connectors do more than just allow the assets to snap together. They can also pass critical information from one asset to another. So if I select the first asset we did earlier, I can change the width. I can come in and select from a drop-down list uh, an 18 inch wide duct. And as soon as I select that you'll see the entire run update to suit automatically. Now they are very very intelligent. Here's a transition component and the transition prevented that change from moving to the other side. As an example of that I'm going to change the diameter of the round duct to 9 inches and you'll notice everything updates appropriately. Now many people like to ask if sheet metal components can be assets and they absolutely can. If I were to double click this part and I wanted to you know, see the flat pattern that's contained within the component, absolutely. You need to understand that these assets can hold your product manufacturing information. Now working with assets is fantastic, but it's important you understand that you can work with any 3D model you can get your hands on. Listen, if that model was generated in one of these legitimate CAD applications that's out there, you can utilize that model in the factory design suite. And we do that with the insert model command. I'm going to start this and I'm going to bring in a model from another CAD system. Now, as I uh, let me pull this up here to the top and I'm going to try to expand the list so that you can see all the different CAD applications that are available. Of course, all the Autodesk products are available, the CATIA, uh, DXF, uh, JT, NX, Parasolids, Pro-E, uh, Revit, STEP, IGIS, ACES, all of those are available. Even SolidWorks and STL, all of those are available as an insert option. Now in this case, I have a file that was initially modeled in AutoCAD. I'm going to bring that in and I want you to notice that even though it was modeled in another CAD application, it appears and it lands upright on the floor. And I can position this thing anywhere I want. 
Uh, let's say that maybe your cat application used a different up direction. Well, when I drop this in position, I then have the opportunity to select which way was up in the authoring CAD application. This one's correct, so I'm just going to agree to that. But now the reposition command appears, and I can maneuver this thing anywhere I want. The insert model command makes it so easy to utilize CAD data uh, and collaborate with people who are using other CAD packages. Now you have seen how the connector points and the reposition command and the insert model command make working in 3D a breeze. It is so easy to utilize the factory design suite that I like to say even a tradesman can be given the application and encouraged to tell the designers how the layout should be accomplished. Many times it's actually easier to teach a veteran tradesman how to utilize the computer in the factory design suite rather than training a college graduate who's very versed in computers the intricacies of your manufacturing rules and practices. Back in Inventor, I'm going to go over to my piping category and I'm going to bring in a few piping assets. I'd have to ask this question. Uh, if you do pipe runs and you have a company that produces these layouts with piping in the space, who knows more about how those layouts should be done than the people who have been actually building it in the shop for years. The factory design suite is so easy, this asset-based approach is so simple to learn that you can literally put this in the hands of anyone. You don't have to be a 3D expert in order to utilize the factory design suite. Here's a great example of just dragging parts together and having them update or snap together automatically. Uh, I can select the assets. I can come in in this case. I can choose the diameter that I need. I then can quickly go grab an elbow, snap it in position. Let's grab another length of pipe. We'll grab a valve. And then finally another length of pipe. This time I want this length of pipe to be 12 feet long. So we'll select that and just type in 12 feet. Now, I call this the stick building approach or a piece by piece approach, which is exactly how the guys in the shop have been putting these pipe runs together for years. And I think that actually appeals to a number of designers, the simplicity of this pipe run. Listen, uh, Inventor has many different ways to do more advanced pipe runs. Uh, there is an auto routing feature which is part of the basic Inventor application that does fantastic pipe runs where all you have to do is pick the start point and the end point. But many of us are used to this piece by piece approach which is exactly how the factory design suite works. One of the final advantages that I'm going to focus on is the ability to handle extremely large layouts. Now you saw in that previous Inventor example in just a few moments how easy it was to put 25 plus models on the screen. And you can imagine how big this assembly can get and how quickly it can get very large. Well the factory design suite includes the Navisworks application. Navisworks allows me to generate uh, incredible mock-ups, very, very large mock-ups of my layout space. Here is that entire ship deck updating or loading all at once. And I hope you noticed how fast that actually loaded onto my screen. I'm going to zoom in here and just give you a little tour of the Navisworks environment. Navisworks works with just about any kind of 3D software you can imagine. If I were to take a moment and just look at the file types available here, let's pull this up and we'll expand this. I, I like to say that if it's 3D, you can absolutely use this with Navisworks. Uh, of course, the Inventor and AutoCAD information come directly in. The STEP, IGES, and ACES data for typical translations, Siemens NX. Uh, things like CATIA, SOLIDWORKS, PRO-E, all of those are honored. But even tools like DWF Design Review and Google SketchUp are honored, as well as Point Clouds. Uh, those are all honored inside of the Inventor environment. Now we came into Inventor to talk about large assemblies. And when it comes to large assemblies, I don't know of anyone who creates larger assemblies than shipbuilders. The factory design suite was a perfect fit 
for shipbuilding layout design. We can create incredibly large digital mockups of the entire ship space, including things like point clouds. Here you see a couple of point clouds that have been laid on top of a few of those piping runs I mentioned earlier. And all of this data appears on the screen very, very easily. So size doesn't matter anymore. There's no limit to the size of your digital mockup with this Navisworks application. So we've seen many of the advantages that the factory design suite offers layout designers. Now I want to focus on some of the designs that can utilize the factory design suite other than factories. Our first example is the one I've already shown you and that is the shipboard compartment layout. I can't express how well our shipbuilders have embraced utilizing the factory design suite for shipboard layout design. It's been incredible and I hope you've seen how the factory design suite fits perfectly in that shipboard compartment layout process. Now I want to focus on the command and control centers. Now maybe in this particular case you're not the architect, you're actually the furniture manufacturer or the component manufacturer and you need to highlight your product in context of somebody else's architectural design. I've opened up the Secure Operations Center in my Inventor Factory Design Suite application. And before I get started, I actually want to confirm something that many of you will ask. Uh, you'll notice here that we're actually going to work in context of the architectural design. And that's because the Insert Model command allows me to insert Revit data. Uh, you can insert Revit data, you can insert AutoCAD architectural data, uh, I don't care where the architectural design comes from. If it's 3D, you can insert that into the Inventor application. In our previous designs, we were putting an AutoCAD drawing on the floor uh, using the DWG overlay command. But it is absolutely possible to import an architectural design and add your layout in context of the architectural design. Now I'm going to go to my Office category in my Asset Browser, and I'm going to bring in uh, one of those wall monitors. Uh, in this scenario, maybe you're the equipment manufacturer and you need to show your product in context of somebody else's architectural space. So in this case, you can see how easily the monitor comes in place. I can drop it off. In this case, I need to adjust which way is upright. Happens very nicely. And then the reposition command allows me to spin this around and then I can place it anywhere I want uh, put it on this back wall and we'll even change the elevation and we'll put it up here. I don't know when I've ever seen 3D as easy as it is to use inside of the factory design suite. It's incredible. Uh, let's go back out and talk about some of these custom pieces of furniture for this command and control center. Again, maybe you're the person who generates these custom pieces of furniture like the monitoring workstations that are used in these command centers. So I can come in, again I can drop it right in place with the factory design suite and then I can use those connectors to snap my components together. In this case uh, this monitoring unit actually makes an arc. So we can absolutely work from the top view if we need to and we can position these components anywhere we want in the design. So if you're a custom equipment manufacturer and you need to put your assets in context of somebody else's architectural design on a constant basis, you certainly want to consider using the factory design suite. Now I want to focus on the versatility of the factory design suite and how functional our assets can be. A few years ago I saw an article about how the United States Navy actually handles these multi-million dollar flight assets on board an aircraft carrier. Up in the flight deck there is a plywood replica of the flight deck and they have game pieces that represent each of the jets. Now the handler will actually manually move these game pieces across the flight deck in order to manage these assets in reality. And you can see these game pieces have the flight number and they have different color codes which represent the type of plane and the mission that plane is built for. 
They also put bolts and thumbtacks on the game pieces to indicate things like preventative maintenance or the fuel status of the, of the asset. Now the article said, oh by the way, this, this entire uh, plywood cutout is called a Ouija board. Now they've been using that for years, but the article said that the Navy was finally going to replace the Ouija board with an electronic piece of software that you know at a moment's notice was going to be able to show you the asset and the status of the asset and allow the handler to position it just like he could on that primitive Ouija board. Now when I saw how much money they were actually going to spend on this computer application I was shocked. And another thing that shocked me was the fact that the factory design suite can do all of this right out of the box. I've opened up my flight deck example and before I get started, I need you to understand that you're not looking at any sensitive information. I actually downloaded the flight deck from Google SketchUp. Uh, if you're really interested in this process, instead of using an architectural design, I basically took a screenshot, uh, a picture of the top of the flight deck from the Google SketchUp model. I scaled it up full scale and I used it as a decal on an inventor part, which is the basis of this design. Now we came in here to talk about uh, managing assets and how versatile the factory design suite is and how functional our assets can be. So I'm going to go to my flight deck assets and I'm going to bring out an airplane. And we're going to put it onto the flight deck and we'll use the reposition command to place it. You know, space on board an, an aircraft carrier is a precious thing. Uh, there is uh, such limited space that when they park these planes, they actually park them with the tail hanging off the side of the ship. Uh, think about that, a million dollar aircraft with the tail parked off to the side. So the strategic location of these assets is absolutely critical. Now at a moment's notice that handler needs to be able to look at the plane and determine a few things. So I'm going to select this asset and the things that he's interested in are things like the flight number. So here I'm going to change our flight number to 111 let's say that it, it requires fueling, it's unfueled that means that it has to be red and it is uh, at this case I guess uh, waiting for refueling and uh, currently now the wings are folded up if I update that you'll see the asset update automatically the plane right next to it, let's do a different scenario how about this uh, flight number 222, it's fueled let's say it's ready to go to the flight line so that means green, it needs to be moved it's go for flight and in this case just as an example let's pull the wings down typically we wouldn't do that but I want you to see the functionality so here you can see how versatile our assets can be and again even from far away you'll notice that these assets have a descriptor this little teardrop shape and if I hover over that I want you to notice that as I touch the asset it tells me the flight number it tells me the fuel status tells me the state of the wings up or down so you don't have to constantly zoom in, you can track this information. Now listen, I'm not saying that the United States government should go out and buy a factory design suite and replace this piece of expensive software. What I want you to see is how versatile our application is and how it can be used in any kind of layout design. Retail spaces are another excellent example of where the factory design suite can be used for layout design. I mentioned earlier that the very first demo I ever gave for Factory Design Suite was to a group of people looking to lay out a supermarket. Back in Factory Design Suite, I've started a new layout, and I'm going to use my Add DWG Overlay command to bring in an AutoCAD drawing. Now, this AutoCAD drawing was generated with Architectural Desktop. So when I bring it in, I get the 2D footprint, but I also get all of the 3D architectural elements that were part of that architectural design. So this works perfect with uh, architectural desktop. It is important the same workflow is also available if you want to use the insert model command and bring in a Revit file. Now laying out a supermarket is incredibly easy with the factory design suite. I simply went in and I made a few assets of things like shelves and freezers and cabinets and then I can use these assets to lay out the supermarket. Again, you've seen this already, these assets come in, they're easily positioned on the floor, they snap together, 
And we can even uh, develop these custom assets for the ends of the aisles. Now the next time you go to your local supermarket, I want you to take into account the layout design that Wiz used uh, for your supermarket. Uh, it's amazing what is thought of as they lay out these designs. Of course, there has to be enough room in, in each aisle to uh, have two carts go down the aisle. You need to pass each other comfortably as you're shopping. And if I go to my top view, I can use things as simple as copy-paste. I can come in and select some assets and uh, do a copy-paste and those assets come in here. So I can start positioning these aisles. There we go. Right next to each other. Trying to ensure that there's enough room to go down the line. And of course with uh, any kind of layout design, especially in a big building, the idea of missing the columns is pretty much one of the most important things. So this gives the opportunity for the layout designer to come around and make sure that they are positioning their assets in context of those roof supports and they're putting them again in the most strategic location possible. Now I mentioned that this was one of the first demonstrations I ever did with Factory Design Suite and of course word gets back to Autodesk as to how we are using their tool. One of the things that I, I just find so nice is that Autodesk heard what was going on and they started to change the application uh, so that their users would understand that Factory Design Suite is for things other than factories. In the system assets there is now a retail category. Autodesk is absolutely serious about supporting anyone using the Factory Design Suite even though you don't lay out factories. So things like the cart and the display cabinets and the freezers and the shelves that I had to model originally now ship with the product. One of my favorite examples that represents the versatility of the factory design suite is event planning. A few years ago I woke up one morning and I looked at USA Today and I noticed that they were going to play the first college basketball game of the season on board the USS Carl Vincent. And I saw this image in the paper and I looked at it and I thought, wow, what a perfect uh, opportunity to utilize the factory design suite. I'd be so easy to generate this image. All I have to do is generate a few assets of the tents and the portable toilets and the basketball court and the stands and I could generate that image as well. So I asked myself, you know, how long would it take? And I'll ask you, if, if you had to produce a visualization of your layout space similar to what you see here, how long would it take you to produce this image? Well, it took me right about four hours to generate the image that's on the screen. Let me show you how I did it. I've opened up my aircraft carrier flight deck again and I've already shared with you how I got the aircraft carrier flight deck. I simply went up to Google SketchUp and downloaded one of those models and got the uh, flight deck from there. But now I want to focus on how I generated the other assets that go into this design. Well the basketball court. I grabbed the basketball court from a website called GrabCAD. GrabCAD is a fantastic website you can go to. Uh, it really is like Facebook for 3D modelers. If you're a 3D modeler and you want to share your design, regardless of what CAD application you're using, you can share it on GrabCAD. And because the insert model command allows me to generate models from just about any CAD source, GrabCAD is a perfect place to go to find these assets. So I was able to come in and find a basketball hoop very quickly. I didn't, I didn't model this, I just downloaded it from GrabCAD. We'll go ahead and place that there. And we'll place another one down here at the other end. So any model you can download, you can use as an asset with the factory design suite. I also had to model some bleachers. I modeled these to be parametric. so. Um, of course, I could snap these things together to make the side bleachers. We'll just drag those out there. And the end bleachers, I'll put these down here and use the reposition command and the, uh, the, the connectors to snap those together. So any asset I couldn't find online, I was able to download quickly and easily. Or I'm sorry, if I couldn't find the asset, I was able to model it quickly and easily. 
Now you can see it, it wouldn't take long at all to lay out this with the factory design suite. Now I'm going to jump over into Navisworks and I'm going to open up the finished model. Here you can see all of the models that I downloaded from the various CAD sources and the final image that I was able to generate. Again, I got the aircraft carrier from Google SketchUp, combined that with some of the assets that I downloaded from GrabCAD, and along with the assets that I modeled in Autodesk Inventor, and in about four hours I was able to generate the 3D model that was utilized in the initial visualization. A very similar scenario is the battle at Bristol. I mentioned this earlier in my presentation. Bristol, Tennessee is home of the Bristol Motor Speedway. This is the shortest NASCAR track on the circuit. It's a half mile racetrack and in 2016 they're going to host a college football game. Now this stadium is so large that every student and every family member from both colleges are going to be able to come to the football game and it will be one of the largest college football games in history. Well this is just like the previous example we're trying to we're taking a venue which was dedicated to one process and we're converting it to another process and this is another example of where the factory designs we could be used. Again I remember seeing some of the initial visualizations of this and I, I actually saw a video of the Bristol Motor Speedway painting their infield. They went out with a can of paint and they painted a football field so that people would understand what a football field would look like inside of this sporting venue. And I thought to myself, wow, the factory design suite would be a perfect application to generate that type of visualization. I've opened up my layout design for the Bristol Motor Speedway and I was able to generate this model utilizing Google Earth, the images contained there. I was able to bring in those images and paint decals along the model that I created. I think I downloaded the initial model from Google SketchUp to get some dimensions. But I basically just built this inside of Autodesk Inventor. Now what I'd like to do is place the football field. It's very easy for me to go online and find the dimensions of a college football field. And I created an asset. I could bring that asset in place and drop it right in the infield here. We use the reposition command to place it and we can even just position it perfectly right there. Now I wanted to show you how functional these assets can actually be. Uh, in this particular case, I think the home team is Tennessee, so we're going to give them an orange color and we'll put their name in. We'll also put the visiting team in. In this case, we'll give them a dark red color and that's Virginia Tech. So we enter the required information and the asset updates with the new names on the football field. Now just for a bit of cross promotion, let's add a NASCAR hauler and a race car to this design. So you can imagine typically somebody has to come in and park all of these NASCAR haulers at every race. Every NASCAR hauler is represented with a different team name, different team colors, uh, different numbers and things like that. So let's give each of the college teams their own NASCAR treatment. So I'm going to drop in a hauler here we'll drop in the corresponding hauler over here. We'll just place these things together. Now you've already seen how functional our assets can be so let's go ahead and we'll select the asset. We'll give the body color of this asset, let's see for Tennessee, that's going to be orange again. Their accent color is white along with the text color is also white. We'll leave it at number one and we'll put in the name and we'll update the asset. So there you go. Very easy to modify these assets. They're very functional. For Virginia Tech, let's say the body color is dark red. The accent color is orange. The uh, text color will be white in this case. And the name of the team, Virginia Tech. So we talk about having uh, virtual or, or, I'm sorry, parametric assets with the factory design suite. We talk about having incredibly functional assets. And I don't know of any better example than the assets you're looking at here. But now let's add the, let's add the, uh, the race cars to the mix. 
uh, you would imagine, you know, you saw how long it took me to generate the, the haulers. Notice that when I bring in the car, here's that connector. And remember earlier we talked about how the connector passes information from one asset to the other. Here you see the car adopt the same properties as the hauler we're hooking it to. There you go. So if I zoom out, the visualization I have here, I think uh, really very simple and easy to put together. Uh, again, in just a few moments, we were able to generate, or a couple of hours, we were able to generate a model uh, with a football field full scale in context of the stadium. For the final example, I wanted to include the use of reality captured laser scans or point clouds. It's important you understand that the factory design suite is already equipped to handle laser scans and point clouds. I taught a class at Autodesk University this year where I focused on this process of using these laser scans as the actual assets for my layout design. I actually gave it an acronym of Real Reality Enabled Asset Layout. In Inventor, I've opened up a new layout and I've placed the point cloud for a building. Now in this scenario, I need to place my assets into the context of this architectural design and all I have is the laser scan of the building. Also in this scenario, I had the opportunity to scan some assets, uh, some functional machinery, and I want to place those point clouds of those machines in context of the building. Now to get started, I'm going to go to my asset browser, and I'm going to, I'm going to do a search for point cloud. Now, if you have the factory design suite, and you'd like to test this functionality, I want you to understand that I've published all of my point cloud assets to the Autodesk warehouse. So as long as you're hooked up to the internet, you can do a, an, a, a, a search for point cloud and you can use these assets as well. So I have a few of the machines that I was able to use recap and harvest them from a point cloud scan. So uh, here's my drill press. We'll go ahead and put this in position. I want two of those in the little corner of the shop here. I also have a lathe and I want to make sure I use the correct one so bear with me here. I believe that's the correct lathe. We're going to drop this into position as well and here you see these reality captured machines in context of another point cloud scan of a reality captured building. Now uh, I, I believe I, uh, I, got, I grabbed a forklift as well so I can put a forklift down here in the design. Again, that comes from another laser scan. Now all of these scans are done with a high-end laser scanner and this is a quite expensive piece of machinery. Uh, certainly if you have questions about laser scanning, you certainly want to contact your Imaginate Technologies account manager and we can talk about getting you the laser scanning technology that best suits your needs. But I was also able to incorporate several designs that are laser scans that are generated from pictures. Uh, here is a laser scan I generated with pictures I took from my cell phone and the uh, Autodesk uh, Recap Photo application. If you have a subscription to Autodesk, you have access to Recap Photo. And you can just basically take a bunch of pictures of an asset and then you can place that, or I'm sorry, generate a point cloud from just a bunch of pictures. Another example of that is my pickup truck. Uh, right before Autodesk University, I was able to go out and scan my pickup truck with my cell phone. Um, my wife always teases me that uh, I can't park my truck. It, it's almost too big, but I can actually park this truck very easily. And I think I was also able to generate, I think, uh, a, a motorcycle scan. I'll go ahead and place that there. Now again, these are not 3D models. You didn't, it basically you didn't have to take the time to model this in 3D. All you had to do was generate a bunch of pictures of an object and you could use Recap Photo in order to generate the point cloud of that particular object. Now you'll also notice with each of these point clouds that I was able to go in and add a simple sketch at the bottom of the point cloud. I did this inside of Autodesk Inventor and it makes these point clouds incredibly useful. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to save this assembly and then I'm going to generate a new drawing. 
Now honestly, I'm about to show you something that I don't think I've ever seen done with point clouds before. And that's actually to generate a drawing from point clouds. Very quickly and easily, I can generate a drawing of the building and the assets that I've placed inside of it. Uh, I have a simple version, and if I want to take just a, a simple opportunity to come over and uh, include all of the sketches, I can do detailed versions of the design as well. And again, this is just point cloud data. But it works. Now it works perfectly with the Autodesk Factory Design Suite workflow. I can actually generate drawings of any of the designs that I've shown you today. And I can add a parts list to the design. We'll go ahead and add our parts list here. And I can also balloon my design. I can come over and quickly add balloons. And even the forklift down here. And of course, you know, basically just like any inventor demo I've ever done, if I go back over to the uh, to the assembly and I make a change, that change will immediately appear in the drawing. Now for this example, let's bring in a generator. We'll pull in a generator and I'll put it in the back of the pickup truck. So uh, real quickly, I'll go over and just lift that up to it's right at the top of the pickup truck bed right there. And of course, if I go back to the drawing, that addition is made to my design automatically and I can even add a balloon because this has already been added and appended to the parts list. So the ability to use laser scan point clouds as assets is incredibly functional and it works already with the factory design suite. Uh, just, as, just to wrap this up, you've seen an entire layout process where I didn't use a single 3D model. I just used reality capture point clouds from various scans. As we wrap up, I wanted to go over a few of the things you saw in the presentation today. You saw us use the factory design suite in many different designs that had one major thing in common. They weren't factories. I don't care what kind of layout design you produce, the workflows available in the factory design suite will make your life as a layout designer so much easier. You saw the floor and how important that ground plane was for any particular layout design. You saw how nice it was to add uh, AutoCAD drawings to the floor via the DWG overlay command. You saw an incredible asset based approach. Simple assets that snap together and land upright on the factory floor. Those assets are easy to create from any 3D CAD data. They can be parametric and incredibly versatile and functional. And again, you saw how the factory design suite was so easy to use that anyone in your design team could pick it up and start using it right away. So again, as we finish up, I think it's really important that you remember one thing. When it comes to the factory design suite, don't let the word factory get in the way. If you have any questions about this presentation, please feel free to contact your Imaginate Technologies account manager or support representative.